Hello and welcome to DC Daily. I'm Hector Navarro and I'm here with my pals, Amy Dallin and Sam Humphreys. Hi. Hello. Yo, y'all. How you doing? So before you watch any further, if you haven't seen episode seven of Stargirl, go check it out and then rejoin us. This is your spoiler warning because we are going to spoil it right now really, mm-hmm. really badly. Warning three, two, one, and time's up. We're going to get Spoiled. into it. Spoiled. Okay. Spoiled. Here we go. Spoiled. Episode spoiled. Guys, I hate to say it, but this is our final breakdown of Stargirl. And my first I breakdown know. of Stargirl and our final breakdown of Stargirl. And Amy is definitely crying right now. Yep. It's in the oh, script. Ames. And it's true. Ames. She is crying. And since this is it, let's deep dive into this episode like nobody's watching because apparently they aren't. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> exactly. Only teasing. Only teasing. We love our DC Daily fans and we're so happy to be able to do this. So let's get into it. First off, what the F is up with Cindy, a.k.a. Shiv? This is crazy. We learned about more about her background. She's not just a mean girl. Like, she's straight up evil with a capital E. Yeah, I don't know. I, I beg to differ with your detective work there. Okay. Hector, I think they're certainly setting her up that way. But I don't think she's full evil. I think she- uh, Did you watch the end of the episode, Shumfries? Look, this girl is under extraordinary circumstances. She's under extraordinary pressure. She is she's grown up as the daughter of a supervillain. Mm. That's like when you when you talk to people and they're like, "Oh my god, the pressure I had in my family to be a doctor, mm. the pressure I had in my family to be this." Her mom has not been around. Her father has been her only strong influential parental support because the right. the stepmom is weird and a pushover and a baby a robot. The main directive in her life is coming from her father who is a supervillain. So, she has been taught that this is the way to go. This is the way to win the parental love that we all care for, that we all crave. So I think she is doing bad things, but I I think there's potential here for her to be redeemed and team up with Stargirl in the end. I don't know. I that's just that's all I'm saying. Interesting. I have to say I was really surprised. So like I with I had ideas coming in as soon as I saw her from things I recognized from the comics, but watching this episode and watching what looks like her very real loneliness and a yes. potentially real kind of sort of reach out to Courtney with Cindy mm-hmm. who I have hated from the first second for the way she treats Yolanda, for the way she treats her friends, for the way she treats everyone. Like, to to sort of find myself being like, ooh, I actually kind of felt bad when Courtney was going to break the plans. Uh, and I was just like, how did I get here? And then promptly I was right back on the train because uh, she was scary. So you're saying this might be a classic sort of high school teen storyline where the new kid moves in and because they have no baggage are able to befriend like the other outsiders of the school and actually open them up. And then they realize, oh, all kids are kids going through stuff. Teens are teens going through stuff. So you guys are just saying that Cindy just may need therapy. That's what you both are saying to me. Yeah, get that girl in the therapy. Therapy works wonders, you know, like some self-reflection, some unpacking, somebody to give her permission to say that my family sucks and it's not my fault and I don't Mm. need to repeat the sins of my parents over and over again. A lot of people beat themselves up their whole lives because of things that their parents have programmed into them. Like who Mm. would Cindy be with just like a, a, a real supportive relationship in her life, probably her first. Like, who yeah. is that person with just, you know, a little support, a little love? I don't know. Maybe if Cindy can't find a therapist, she can at least go to the Solomon Grundy that's being kept in her basement. Are you kidding me? What? Uh, you know, he, he snarls a lot and he's really scary, but I bet he's a good Listener, mm, mm. how does that make you feel, Solomon Grundy? Born <laughs> yeah, mm. You're like okay. Doctor Grundy. <laughs> yes, yes I like, would love cage side confessions. Uh, just people <laughs> pouring out their hearts to Solomon Grundy because everybody's down in these tunnels. Like, what is yeah. going on with these tunnels? If we can kind of give a little bit of a uh, of a prediction for what we think the rest of the season is going to give us, this whole town being just infested with supervillains? Infested with yes. underground <laughs> secret tunnels. It's so creepy. <laughs> it's kind of given me like um, Cobra from G.I. Joe vibes because mm, they took over yeah. a small town through like a pyramid scheme and manipulated all of the, the sort of fathers and mothers of the town to kind of link up to this secret organization. So so that's kind of my little mini prediction. Courtney, let's talk about Stargirl for a second. Yeah. She follows the principal into the underground lair 
Courtney Ooh. is dealing with uh, Icicle's son. Should I call him Icicle Jr.? Like right here, this little guy right here. Uh, right, right, right. Should we call him Maybe? Ice Cube? Ice Ice Cubed? Um, I, uh, the love interest you love to hate. Let's talk about Courtney and what she's dealing with in this episode. I was fascinated watching this because last episode was so fulfilling and so satisfying and so fun to watch the team come together. Yeah. And you get the opening for this one with everybody's getting ready and they're doing a cool walk down the hallway. And oh, yeah. you, it's so neat to have watched these characters come together. But then you see where it starts to go wrong. And I thought that was a really interesting, like, watching Courtney adjust to the things she wanted, which was a team, but that doesn't mean she automatically knows how to do it right, which I thought right. was a very interesting take. I've just got one thing to say to Courtney, is that the S in JSA does not stand for Stargirl. Oh. It stands for society, because the JSA is a team. And she is a fantastic member of that team. She's going to be a fantastic superhero. She may even be a fantastic leader of the JSA one day. But you got to learn teamwork. You got to learn to work with your team. That's what the JSA is all about. Since the golden age of comics, the 30s, the yeah. 40s, the JSA is all about heroes coming together to be bigger than the sum of their parts. And that is the lesson. In some ways, they are the original heroes coming together to be bigger than the sum of their part. They are in every way, aren't they? I think they're the, the very first super team of all time. And in another way, and this is what I love about the JSA, especially when you kind of compare and contrast with other superhero teams, the Justice League is the big show. The Justice League is like the job, but the JSA is a family. And that's what I love about the show Stargirl is that it's incorporating those themes of what it is like to be a member of the Justice Society of America or be a legacy member of the Justice Society of America. That's one of my favorite things about DC as a brand. And this show leans so hard into that, what it means to all of them. Because what you were saying about Cindy having supervillain parents applies to like half the cast. And they're all handling it differently. They know different things. They don't know different things. Like I feel like Cameron does not know what is going on and I feel worried, you know, uh, like you do. But uh, it's been so much fun to watch play out and the family dynamics are usually my favorite parts. Well, they're all my favorite parts of the show. But can I just say, I loved Courtney's talk with her brother. It was one of my favorite moments. Because of course he feels left out. Of course he feels left behind. Like taking this journey from Courtney not even wanting to deal with her stepdad to her brother being like, cool, you're best friends now. That's great. Like, it was such a nice moment. Mm -hmm. And Mikey even called him out on it at the end when they're at the game on the bleachers where they both had a lie and they said the same thing at the same time as opposed to early in the episode when it's like, what are you training for? Uh, and then they both say two different things because they're terrible liars. And I'm like, that should be superhero 101 is you got to be a, at least somewhat of a good liar. Guys, come on. <laughs> None of them are. Wait. <laughs> so since this is our last recap of Stargirl for the foreseeable future, for the time being, um, let's talk about stuff we would like to see, maybe potential future matchups we would like to see. I got to kick it off with this. I love Luke Wilson in a giant mech suit as Stripe. I want to see that character take on Solomon Grundy. That's what I want to see. Yes. That's what I want to see in yes. this season. What is something you want to see, Sam? I want to see more of Wildcat. I love Wildcat. I love the legacy of Wildcat. I love what they have done with Wildcat here. I want to see some Wildcat kick some serious butt. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, I'd love to see like a Wildcat and Sportsmaster where like mm. she's the boxer and he's the Ooh terrifying sports guy like uh because what like tigress and sportsmaster became like weird faves for me where i'm like i want you to run away from my heroes real quick but i also want to spend more time with you because you're let's, fun. yeah let's talk about that because i'm a dc fan and i thought i knew some deep cut characters and if you had told me three four or five years ago that one of my favorite villains was going to be sportsmaster I would have been like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tell me more. And then that person would have been like, yeah, man, Young Justice, Stargirl. You're going to love yep. Sportsmaster. It's a one-two punch. Tigress. It's awesome. And Sportsmaster in Young Justice in the animated world is a very serious, credible threat. Hmm. And I was honestly a little trepidatious. I'm like, okay, that got Sportsmaster on Stargirl. Like, is that going to work the same way? And Sportsmaster in live action, like, just whamming some baseballs into super like teen superheroes that are trying to fight him. I'm like, dang, that's a credible threat. That hurt. That looks like it hurts. 
So shout out to them. That's been awesome. Can I say one more thing that I really want to see going forward in this show? And it is a certain janitor with a sword. What is going on with this janitor? What is happening here? How fun was that as a DC fan? Because I'm like, wait, who is that? Who is that? And I had to check my Rolodex. And at first I'm like, is this Atomic Knight? No, that can't be. No, that can't be it. All right, pause it if you don't, if you haven't read, if you want to be totally surprised by this, uh, I'm going rogue and declaring that you should mute the show for like the next 30 seconds to a minute. But uh, I am so excited about this because they've been dropping these hints all season. And if you've read the original Stars and Stripe run, you recognize a janitor with a beard and maybe a mysterious sword. Because he is Shining Knight of the <laughs> Seven Soldiers of Victory, Stripesy's other golden age team vintage golden age weirdness wow. my favorite thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i was just i was just thinking of jsa members but jsa is not the only golden age super team mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. course you're the cool right. and that the cool thing stripe run with jeff johns yes that's it ah. The other it was cool all thing right about there that, for me. Uh, it's all right there for me. The other really cool thing about that janitor and who he could potentially be, that sword that he had, I'm pretty sure, Amy, was the exact same sword I had as a prop when we did our The Last God RPG show. <laughs> yeah! I am pretty sure. <laughs> I was looking at it and I was like, I held that sword. That's a heavy sword. That's awesome. Stargirl, Last God crossover. I think the tone is just, just perfect for that. The other cool thing I just have to say about this episode in particular, episode seven, technically the first post- Crisis on Infinite Earths glimpse into this universe and Earth right. that we've seen so far. So it's the first wait, wait, segment. It's and we late, know that because late, of late. how? Well, because we saw in, in Crisis on Infinite Earths that amazing DC and TV movie crossover extravaganza. We saw one great shot of the heroes assembled. That came from episode six of Stargirl. So now we're in unknown territory, folks. We don't know what's right. going to happen on the show. Right. And it is so, so exciting. Post crisis, baby. Officially on Earth 2, post-crisis, baby. Learn that term if you're a TV fan, because that's a comic book term that we've been saying for years. Post-crisis, <laughs> baby. Welcome to the party. You guys had some awesome predictions. Amy, I especially think your prediction of who the janitor is going to be, based on comic book lore, may be right. And we're going to have to wait and see. Now, Amy, you're going to sit down one last time with Jeff Johns and a special guest? Yes, Brett Bassinger is going to join what? us to talk about this episode. Oh, my God. Oh, I can tell Star that you're excited. Herself? Oh, Amy, that is so awesome. Cannot wait. Let's get right to it. All right. To dive into this very exciting episode, we are joined once again by Jeff Johns and Brett Bassinger. Welcome. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us at DC Daily to talk about, you know, nothing exciting happens in this one. It's not scary at all. This is our quiet episode. <laughs> this show has been such a blast. We are having an amazing time watching through it, and we have a lot to get into with this episode, so we're going to build up to the big climactic stuff, but let's start with some very interesting things along the way. So many interesting new character revelations and expansions on some of what we've seen. A certain mysterious janitor, a certain creature locked behind a door, and of course a whole lot of revelations about Cindy. Can we talk about any of the teases of new characters and new information from this one? I feel like the most shocking is Janitor Justin. I had no idea where his storyline was going this season and it gets crazy. His, his story is one of my favorites, I'll just say that. I think it's going to be a favorite for everyone. Whether or not you might have a guess at this point in time, I think some people will have guesses and some people won't, but it's a, a wonderfully intriguing character possibilities. And of course, saves the day a little bit, maybe. Yeah, he does. I mean, the he's a great actor too, Mark, who plays mm -hmm. uh, Justin. There's a lot of story coming. I, you know, when we were on set, everybody was super excited about it because it was a storyline that developed later in the season. And, and Mark brought such like heart and emotion to it. So in this episode, we get an interesting parallel. Cindy's dad doesn't think that she is ready for ISA duty and Pat doesn't want court on full JSA duty or going out on her own. Can you talk about the connection between them in this episode? It's so funny because there's so many reflections between Courtney and Cindy, but so many oppositions as well. I guess the choice, do a little throwback, the choice they've made on how to deal with their hard times is very different. I really love this episode because you kind of, you see into Cindy's storyline why she is the way she is. It is maybe bold to say, but I think she's probably my favorite villain of the whole season. 
Um, so that's what I loved getting to watch their fight scene. Oh, yeah, you'd never seen it with visual effects completed, right? No, right? I had not. I had not seen that episode yeah. ever. Can you talk about that big fight scene in the gym? It's when I felt like I started really feeling confident with the staff because the bow staff stuff did not come naturally to me. It's very tall. Like why? When I had I had gymnastics and combat training history, but nothing with a staff. And I feel like this was the first episode where when they would give me choreography, I finally started feeling confident with it. So I felt like I really got to push myself physically and having Meg who plays give there to, to do that with, uh, that fight scene, I mean, y'all saw it, it's pretty epic. It is, it really is, and scary for the record. To me, scary, I mean, one of the things, I, I give a lot of credit to to Walter Garcia, who's our second unit director and stunt coordinator and you know, the stunts on the show and Breck trained with him, like he's amazing. Like he's, he's fantastic and the work he did was, unbelievable working with Leah, they created this amazing sequence in the gym, especially that one shot at the end when you see them just fighting, you know, around the turntable and all the VFX Zoic put in, it's it's epic. This is the first time Courtney sees Shiv, finds out it's Cindy. She's standing in front of a trophy case. And so Leah was like so on Meg, like you can't flinch. If if Shiv flinches, that, that doesn't make sense. Like that doesn't happen. And so they had one take and she nailed it. I flinched like crazy when it exploded. <laughs> but thank God the camera wasn't on me, but it was so practical. It felt real. I was wondering just for me, whether I, I thought it was amazing that Leah Thompson was here and there's a sort of uh, present past 50s flashback thing and Grease is the theme of the uh, the dance. Is that just all a happy accident? Grease is the theme of the dance was in the script. Evan Ball wrote, one of our writers, great, great writer. Um, it was always in the theme of the script. You know, we watched Back to the Future as the entire cast and crew watched Back to the Future before we even shot anything because that tonally is one of our touchstones for the show. And Leah is such an amazing director to have that tie in there was great too so it, it, it's all it's both a happy accident and not at the same time that's magic that's fabulous before the big fight happens uh courtney follows principal bowen into a secret set of underground tunnels that seem to go everywhere in this town cindy notices pulls her out into the high school they have the big fight can you talk about how maybe their respective egos are getting in the way of their decision making i think that's one of the very first things jeff told me that it's courtney's greatest strength as well as her greatest weakness is like her confidence and determination because she does things without thinking and it can get her into trouble. And so I feel like both her and Cindy are there just looking for their end goal. Yeah, I love the crossover that those two have and that it is the the drive that gets them in trouble a lot of the times because they their drive and their urge to do something and accomplish something is a little bit bigger than their experience and their ability to do it. But it makes them really interesting, I think. I love watching, instead of a reluctant character, really watching that someone that's you know too proactive. That to me makes it a lot more fun. And you know, Courtney gets to make some mistakes like this one. It's a big mistake. Huge thanks to Jeff Johns and Breck Bassinger for giving us some insider info on this episode. Breck is so great, that was awesome. Guys, thank you so much. These deep dives and breakdowns of Stargirl have been a blast, and you guys can keep the fun going on DC Universe in the community section, which is one of the best communities on the planet. As for oh, yeah. us, we're gonna keep watching and probably send each other texts about the rest of the season because we love each other very much. Uh, and you guys can always hit us up on the internet to talk about Stargirl, we would love that. So. We will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye, y'all.